What's going on guys? My name is Chris Ferling and welcome to the channel. We're all about running lifestyle and everything in between. And today I want to show you the approach I take to track my data and why I do it this way. And also, if you want to follow along, I do have a link in the description below where you can pick up a template from Google Sheets and, you know, use this for yourself or follow along with this video. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it, eh? All right, so here we are on screen. You can see I have Google Sheets open. Make sure you do pick up the template if you do want to follow along. Otherwise, sit back and listen. And, uh, you know, maybe you can just take some things away to apply it to your own versions or your own styles. The intent here is really just to take you through the basics and the things that I would be tracking from day dot. Um, I do a lot more than this now, but I think this is the basic and everyday things that will enable you to grow and enable you to track your data at, at enough detail to be able to find things that maybe aren't working and things that are working even better. So you can you know, start to hone down or really double down on areas which are enabling you to grow. So the first thing you'll see here is there's a whole bunch of different columns. We've got a big range here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. We've got ID, which is just your numbers. You've got your platform. This is your eBay, Facebook, wherever it is, item. This is the item title. You want to have this basically exactly the same as what you've got on your eBay store or where else, just in case you are doing a bit of an audit check. Reference link, that's a link to the item if you need to. Type or category. This will be different for everyone, but you know, basically setting out some different types of categories, books, clothes, toys, video games, DVDs, etc. Source, op shop, retail, wherever it may be. Listed price, it's always nice to be able to put a listed price and then seeing the sold price later, you know, to see if there is a difference in terms of people making offers. Date listed, the item that you actually listed and the date it was listed. Inventory tag or SKU. I track this by date, however, some people use SKUs, so we will touch on this sh shortly. Date sold, the date the item actually sold, the time, this is using a formula. As you can see, in the bar, it's using a formula, basically, when you sell something, it will update automatically. Postage, this is if they're paying for postage, I paid postage, this is if you're paying for postage because you're doing free post. Status, posted, listed, sold, posted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can have more. You can say unlisted, not listed. You can add, remove, but basically I would focus on listed, sold, and posted. Sold, yes or no. This will update automatically when you update the sold price. Purchase price or cost of goods. This is your cost of goods or purchase price. Fees, the fees you've paid, this will automatically update at 15% just because that's around the rough amount that I'm doing at the moment. Sold, this is the price you want to put in that you sell the item for. Profit will automatically update based on once you fill out the entire sheet, which we're going to go through in a minute. And then your margins, which will calculate automatically. And then your item ID if needed. And then you've got an action column or for comments. At the top, you will see there is some totals and averages based on the data below. And as we go through, you will see this start to change. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend to add an item. I'll take you through that process. We'll then re um, sell the item and then we'll do it again, just so you can see the flow of things. And then we'll touch on some of the items in the actual sheets as well. So we're going to sell something. Actually, we want to sell something. So we're going to list this on eBay. And in this case, let's do some Star Wars DVDs. I'm a big Star Wars fan. That's why we're talking about Star Wars. Star Wars DVDs. Now let's assume this is exactly the same as what it will be on eBay. So we're going to say free post. Link to it if you need to. We're going to put this as DVDs. We got this from the op shop. List of price. We're going to sell this at $40. The date we're listing it is, let's just pretend today is the 15th of April. Okay. Inventory tag. Now I do all my inventory by date. We will touch on this in detail shortly. But we're going to say 15th of April, the cost of good was $4.05. So we're going to say inventory is 15th of April, and we're going to jump over to the purchase price and make this $4.05. Date sold, not applicable because we're listing. Time, not applicable because we're listing. Postage, are they paying for posts? No, we're going to do free posts this round, so we will update this when we sell it. And status, we're going to say listed. We're going to put the... Sold price as zero because we have not sold it yet. And then we are done. You can update this with an item ID if you would like. And then you can add any comments if you would like as well. However, I've got a formula here for you. 
if that makes a bit more sense, just for when we get through to selling the actual item. Which, now we're going to do. We're going to sell this item, assuming someone's come along a couple of days later and actually made the purchase. Today's the 19th of April. Let's just assume someone has made the purchase of the 19th of April. You'll see the time automatically updates and things above here will start to change as well. Your totals and your averages. However, how much did we sell it for? We need to update the sold column to the actual amount it sold for. In this case, it sold for the perfect 40, $40 sold. Now, what you need to do is update this status to being sold. When you do that, over here, it will update to say needs action. Now, the reason why that is, is because we still need to do the posting or f figure out the postage costs. So you're gonna jump onto your Australian Post or you're gonna go through your postage vendor and figure out how much it's going to be to yourself because you're doing free post, so it's gonna come out as an expense. So postage in this case, let's say is $9.15. You then can update the sold to be posted because you now know the price and you're gonna go send it. So now you are completed. You can see your profits $20.80 after fees, after purchase costs, and after I paid post of $9.15. Now, you would have seen some of these things up here changed. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another one just so you can follow along again. And this time it's gonna be a slightly different scenario. This time, let's sell a Star Wars beanie. Okay, we're gonna do link to the item if you have a link. We're gonna do clothes, purchase from an op shop. This time we're gonna say $36 that we're listing it for. Let's say we listed it on 1st of March 21. At this point, we're going to say it was um, 1st of March 21 is the inventory skew as well. And we're just going to make up a cost of goods, you know, just make up a fake cost of goods of, let's say we paid $4 for it. Date sold, time, postage. We're actually going to make them pay for post this time. So we're going to assume it's going to be $9.15. We're going to tag this as listed and put the sold price as zero. If you do have an item ID, you would add it. And then if you do want to add actions or comments, you can. Otherwise, it will default to the formula. Now, let's assume someone's come along. They've made you a best offer of $30. You're going to accept it. So, sold, $30. The date it sold was 19th of April. You're going to mark this as sold. And then, because they did the postage, well, that's good. It's not actually done. You still need to go through the process of checking your postage, understanding are you going to get a savings? Because if you're not using Australia Post Business, well, then you're missing out on savings. But just check yourself in case you have to pay a little more or maybe you miscalculated. In this case, let's say your postage is only going to be $8.88. So what you're going to want to do is go equals $8.88 minus $9.15. You've got a $0.27 cent savings, which is going to go into your profits. Now, as you can see here, the profits hasn't changed yet, so you're going to update this to say posted, you're all done. Okay, once again, up the top here, you can see totals, averages, days, post, all that jazz has now been updated. We're just going to pause for a second. If you do have comments, questions along the way, of course, chuck them into the comments section anytime, more than happy to answer, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. We're just going to touch on the inventory quickly. The way I do this is when I go out and source items, I, use, I like to tag them to a date. In this case, let's say we went out on the 19th of April and we picked up 10 items. And we paid $30. That means we've got $3 per item cost of goods. Now, if you had one item which was $100, that means you're going to have 11 items and $130. It's going to dilute the cost of goods or average cost of goods to $11.82. You probably didn't want to say that that 50 cent item is around $11. You could probably get away with maybe being $2 or $3, but $11.82 isn't going to fly. So what you're going to want to do is add a line item, make this one, make this 10, make this 30, and make this 100. And then you can call this big item and you can say brick brack from binnings or, or however you want to tag it. But that way you'll know which is what and it separates and it removes any dilution of numbers or it doesn't skew up 
or stuff up the cost of goods average. Now, the next tab that I have for you is an eBay running tab. The idea of this is it's using a pivot table, which basically pulls the data across as a reporting function, and you're able to then manipulate it, filter on it, and see different things. I've created this for you in a way which will enable you to basically just update it, refresh it. You can add, remove things if you'd like, but you probably don't need to. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on the pivot. Okay. And the first thing you always need to do, just double check, is making sure you've got everything selected. So you're going to go click on the pivot, go on the right hand side, down the bottom to filters. And where it says date sold is you're going to say select all and then remove blanks and press OK. As you can see, item here is sold 10th of April, 15th of April and 19th of April. It's got all the data here, count of items sold on that day, the total amount sold, the total profit and the total purchase or cost of goods. You can obviously add postage and fees. But when you refresh this, you've got to make sure that this data here, that you do copy it down and drag it down. So it will update your moving revenue, which is your total revenue to date. Same for profit, average sales price, average profit price, the week if relevant to you, you don't have to use that in any your margins. Now, you can see this is all April at the moment. You could have actually done this back in this sheet. You could have filled it on date sold and gone to April. But let's just see what happens when we do something that sold in March. So let's just change one of these things to uh, 15th of April. Let's say we listed this in Jan and we sold this on the 3rd of March 21. Okay. You can see here time. What is going on here? Oops, sorry, let me fix that. Okay, so we're gonna make this the 1st of Jan when we listed it, and we're gonna sell it on the 3rd of March, 21, and we'll just change this SKU to be 1st of Jan, yeah. Okay, so in terms of actual dollars, nothing's really changed, but when we come to here, you can see, oh, it still says April. So what you're gonna do, do that quick little refresh, select all, remove blanks, and press OK. As you can see, the 3rd of March sale is now there. You're going to want to make sure this item down here gets copied down. Voila, you're all done. Okay. And this will give you your running average price, your average profit price, your average sales price, your moving profit, moving revenue, margin, and all these items here. Item sold, total sold, profit, and purchase cost. Now, once again, the whole idea is you could actually probably just use this single tab here called Master Track. It does have the information up here for you to track along and see your items or, or data points as a snapshot as you go through. For example, if you come back in here and you say, oh, okay, this one has action, it needs to be posted because you've got no postage cost. What you're going to do is make sure you jump back in here, you update this, tag to posted, you're all done. And the items up above have also updated as well. Now you can filter on this, you can say date sold and focus purely on April. And once again, all the information up here will update for you so you can get that quick snapshot. The reason why I use this information or the reason why I think this information is most important is because when you're starting out or when you're tracking information or when you're tracking sales, you wanna know where you're bleeding or where you're spending the most. At the same time, you can have you can be selling lots and lots of items, but you could have really, really low profit margins, meaning you're not necessarily making lots of money. Versus you could be selling some really expensive items but have high margins and be making a lot more money. This data helps you see that, track that, understand it a bit better. You can create graphs, you can create different ways of tracking it. This way is very basic, very easy, and that was the intent. As you progress, you might decide, as you can see on my screen, I've got my own dashboard tracker to see different graphs, to see different trends, to see different information really quickly, how I want it and when I want it. That's not going to be exactly what you want or exactly how everyone else wants it. So it's important that you just focus on this sheet for now, see if it's going to work, see if you can take something away from it, apply it to your own style, and uh, if not, you can use the template, take it for yourself and, and, and see if it works. 
All right, well, that's it, folks. I really do hope this has helped. If you do have questions, concerns, thoughts, comments, or difference of opinions, do let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to try and address or attend to them or help you out wherever I can. The whole purpose of this is to help you and to give back to the community. Um, I know I've had a, quite a few questions on how to do this. So this is my original way that I've always been tracking it. And I still use all this data. I've just changed it up slightly different just because I have my own, I guess, method in my madness uh, approach. But this is basically the same data. Now, I would recommend you track your data on a weekly basis if you are doing this on a very low end part time basis. If you are doing it just as a really, you know, basically side hobby, maybe do it on a monthly basis. But the more you familiarize with your data, the more you get into the data, the more you can start to understand what's working and what's not. You can start to see trends around what items are selling more in terms of categories versus what items might not be worth your time. Of course, it's another whole different conversation. And if that's something maybe you would like to see, do let me know. Really do appreciate you being here. Of course, uh, yeah, my name's Chris Fellong, and if you liked this, please like, subscribe, comment, do the whole shebang, and hustle. Ciao.